welcome to the Perdita Marcel Show. I am excited today. I have a phenomenal guest for you. Her name is Mayor Lovely Warren. She is the mayor of Rochester, New York. She is the first woman mayor, as well as she is 36 years old, the youngest mayor to ever take office in Rochester, New York. And then when I think about Mayor Lovely Warren, I think about President Barack Obama. I think about how he actually decided to run the race to become the president of the United States of America. And I think about the tenacity that he had. I see the same thing in Mayor Lovely Warren. She is a mayor that has decided to take the challenge. You have to eliminate all fear. You have to step out on what you believe. And she knows how to connect with the people of this city. So I am elated to have her here. Listen, we're going to get ready to go into the interview. But listen, I want you to remember, we have our What's Cooking segment coming up. That segment is going to be tell you what you can eat and what's healthy for your life. Well, I will see you in a few minutes. Galleria, 1115 Hudson Avenue, open every morning at 8 a.m., including Sunday, where all our remedies either buy one, get one half off, or buy one, get the second pack free. Africa's Best and Pink Smooth Touch Relaxers, $1.99. All barber supplies, 15 to 20% off. Eyelashes, two for one dollar and ten dollar wig. Chocolate hair, buy one get one half off and clip and rimming weave. Also buy one get one half off. So come on down to the Hair Galleria. Thank you so much, Mayor Warren, for being on the show with us today. We are excited to have you. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yes, yes. I am excited because as a woman mayor in the city of Rochester, tell me how have you handled your first 30 days as the mayor? Well, I think that women can do it all. You know, yes. we're, we're mothers, we're wives, we're at, at home, we're in the office, we're executives, and um, so we can do it all. And it's really just been making sure that you stay focused and make sure that I stay focused yeah. on the task that's ahead of me and not leading the city. And how have you been able to balance that? Because as you said, we're mothers, whatever positions you take in the workplace, you are the mayor. So you have to handle a lot. So overnight, your life has changed. Yes. Yes. Um, because my schedule was so hectic before, I think okay. that it was easier for me. But I think that what's been challenging is making sure that I still make time for family, yeah. that I'm still, um, you know, in the afternoons coming home at a reasonable hour to spend time with my daughter and my husband. And so at least, you know, three days out of the week, I say, look, I can't do anything past eight o'clock. You have to go home. <laughs> I have past to go eight o'clock when? At night? At night. Wow, that's still late. <laughs> yes, yes, I, I have to go home. Okay. So, you know, want to be able to put my daughter in bed and yes. um, make sure that, I, you know, she sees me and knows that mommy loves her. Yes. And that's so important. That is so important. And so you have set aside time to actually get home at a reasonable time and spend with your, your family, your husband and your daughter. Absolutely. That is so good. And that's what we have to do. We have to balance our schedules. So as a woman with so many different tasks, so many different things on your plate, balancing your schedule and having a good staff. So has your staff been able to adapt to all the things that you have on your plate? Because you said you were already busy, so you got a lot on your plate. 
Well, they're doing an excellent job. I have a wonderful team at, at City Hall. Um, everybody is committed to, to making sure that Rochester succeeds and that we are moving towards the future. And so we all, I say we got baptized by fire <laughs> because it was just like as soon as we came in, we hit the ground running. Yeah. And everyone is just so excited to be there and so excited to get the work done on behalf of our citizens. And that's what's most important. That's important. And what I like about you, when you first took office, your first day, you took your staff on a bus tour of the city of Rochester. Tell me a little bit more about that tour. Well, for, you know, I say that you can live in our city and never see poverty. You can, you know, the way our infrastructure is made, you can, you know, drive around our city and really never see people that have challenges. And I wanted my staff to understand who we represent. We represent the good, the bad, and the ugly. Yes. And so that means every neighborhood, you know, the, the affluent neighborhood as well as the most challenged neighborhoods. And so we can never forget who we serve. Yes. And how do you understand who you serve except for you see it? Yes. You see, you know, the boarded up houses, but you also see the nice houses. Yes. Um, and then you try to figure out how do you bridge the gap between these two very different worlds? How do you ev elevate the entire city? Yes. And so going into the different neighborhoods, they were able to connect. And that's what I like about you. You have connected with the people. And before I ever met you, I, j I would see you and, and you came into some areas that where I was. And it was just really nice to have the connection. Even before you became mayor, you were willing to service the people. You were willing to connect. And I believe that that is such a phenomenal tool to connect in with the people you serve. Because how can you serve a people that you do not connect with? Right, right. You have to go out. And, and that means that I represent every part of the city. And, you know, it's not always easy because, you know, people have some real challenges, but we have some great opportunity. And I, you know, I say all the time that, you know, if you want to be of service to the community, then you have to be in the community. Yes. How do you know what their needs are except for you talk to them? Yes. Now, I can sit there and say what I think needs to happen, but at the end of the day, we're all in this together. There's no way yes. that you can change and uplift and do the things that you need to do, except for if you have the support yes. and the help of the community. And that's what you have to do. Yes. And that is really, really good because knowing what the people are dealing with, at least being able to see and to get, connect with the community that you serve. So I love that because great leadership starts with first connecting. Mm -hmm. So when you connect, you can really identify. Mm -hmm. And that's what I love about you. You identify, you live in the city area. You, you did not move out, even though you could, mm -hmm. you said, listen, I'm going to live in the area where I live and I am going to connect with the people I serve. Mm -hmm. So that is phenomenal. Now tell me a little bit about your vision for the city of Rochester. Well, I want our city to be the great city that it, it once was. You know, um, we're like a phoenix rising, you know, from the ashes. And that's what I look at our city and I see, you know, we have some great opportunities when you look at um, what our colleges and our universities and the businesses that we have here that are unique to Rochester. This past weekend, I participated in Battle Dish, which is on um, Park Avenue, which um, was about six different chefs competing in a competition. And you have people from all walks of life, all different types of dishes, and it was fun. And that, and when I look at Rochester, I look at the assets that we have. You look at places like Strong Museum, and you think about how do we build upon what's great about our city, the fact that we are the city of the arts, and how do we enhance that um, and make people feel proud yes. of where they're from. You know, I'm proud to be a Rochesterian. I was born and raised here. You know, my family lives here. And we're excited about our future. Yeah. And when I look at my daughter, I want her to see this city as a place that she can call home for my grandchildren. Yeah. Um, and so we have to start now. We have to start building those relationships and building upon what we have great about our city so that we can move on to the future. Let me ask you this. Tell me more about the educational program that you put in place, your vision for education. 
Well, today I just left the Montessori school, um, you know, Dr. Thomas or Mitch Thomas, who was Dr. Thomas's wife, um, invited me for career day. And I was able to talk to our young people about their future. And they are the ones that's going to lead lead the city, you know, years from now. And we want to start preparing them for that now. Tomorrow I'll be um, at, I believe, school number 12, um, where we started this program, Lunch with the Mayor. I'm going with the president of the school board, uh, Van White. Excited about that. Um, I think that our children need to see more positive influences that they can touch, that they can feel, that they can say, they're just like me. You know, um, when you know the neighborhood drug dealer, but you don't know uh, the college student or you don't feel like connected to a particular person, you don't think that those dreams are attainable. Um, They look at what's on TV and they think that it's um, all about the glamour, but it's also about hard work. And somebody has to go in and talk to them and tell them and say, listen, you can be whatever it is that you want to be. You don't have to finish where you start. You know, just work hard and um, you can come back and lead the city and one day be mayor or governor or president. If someone told you that you would ne- that this is not your turn, this is not your turn, and how'd you feel about that? Well, you know, I don't think that anybody can tell you what's for you. I think that um, as long as you have faith and you have a conviction and in, in a relationship with, you know, your Heavenly Father, then you know what you can do and what you can't do. But it's about daring to dream. You know, and, and many times I say that I ran because, you know, the children in our city need to be able to see, yes. even if I would have lost the fact that I stepped out there, the fact that they were able to say, wow, you know, here it is a girl from my community yes. that went to the same schools that I attended, you know, that I go to and walk the same neighborhoods that I walk, you know, she's running for mayor and, you know, and I actually won. Yes. And so it's inspiring to them to, to know that, to be able to see that and to know that you can dream and your dreams can come true. Yes. And don't let anybody, anybody tell you what you can't do. Don't let them talk you out of your dreams. And one thing that you said about your faith, because it takes great faith to step out on your dream, to know that even if I don't win, I'm going to step out. Mm-hmm. You got to make a step. Yeah. In order to make it happen, you got to, you have to put that fear behind you and say, hey, let me try this thing. Right. And the thing that I love about you too is this. You're a young woman. You stepped into to office, 36 years old, and you decided that, hey, I'm going to do this. Mm-hmm. And see, when you're young, you don't mind stepping out. Dr. Martin Luther King said, you know, faith is taking a step when you don't see the rest of the staircase. You yeah. don't know where it's going, but you know that you have to keep, you know, you have to take that first step. And so we have to ne- not lose that when you are trying to do the right thing and when you have the right, um, the right heart. Yeah. Um, this race was never about me. It was always about the community and trying to uplift the community as a whole and bring people together. And um, I'm just happy that I'm able to serve. Yes. Um, and that's what I feel that I'm doing is serving our community. Yes. So you're touchable. I love that, that you're touchable. People can relate to you. You're real. That's important as a leader to be real because, you know, people can identify whether you're being honest or not. Right. Right. It's not about politics, right? No, it isn't. And, and thank you for having me. I really appreciate the, the, you know, the opportunity to be on your show and to be of support and for you supporting me as well. Yes. Well, I am happy about that. Let me ask you something else. Let's talk about the Costco um, store that's going to be coming to our city. Tell us a little bit more about that. Well, when I came into office, um, this project was being installed um, in the county legislature. Um, it's a project that's going to bring over 1,500 um, permanent jobs to the, the community and over 1,000 construction jobs. And Costco is going on a city gate site. Anthony Costello has worked very, very hard to bring this project here. And, you know, um, I worked with not only the county executive, but the minority 
leader, Carrie Andrews, as well as the majority leader of the legislature to say, you know, we need to bring together and um, also uh, county legislator Willie Joe Lightfoot. And it was all about coming together as political leaders to say, we don't always get an opportunity to bring jobs like this, living wage jobs um, to our area. And you're talking about permanent jobs for many families that have um, a problem making a living wage. And so um, working together, we were all able to put politics aside and say, we're going to do this for the community. And I'm so excited that, you know, um, if all goes well with construction, um, that I believe the beginning of September will be um, opening up a new store. When you look at that particular area of our city, um, you're not only going to have the city gate project, but you're also having a college town project yeah. up the road. You have the 390 construction project, um, you know, on the highway. Yeah. And so we're just breathing life back into our, our community. Yes, yes. And then also, now that's going to create numerous of jobs mm -hmm. for our community. Mm -hmm. So economically, that's going to help us so much to Definitely. give people jobs. And I was also told that that project, just to be a, a um, on the registers or to be a person that's working there, the minimum wage is like $40,000 a year. Yes. Is that correct? $41,000 a year as a cashier. As a cashier. Mm -hmm. And they have, you know, I think they have like a 1% turnover. So. Well, with $40,000 a year. What would that yeah, well, that's across the country. This is a great company to work for. As you know, um, the president went to visit Costco down in Maryland after um, the next day after he gave his State of the Union speech. And you want to highlight companies that are doing right by their employees. Yeah. You know, everyone can't be an entrepreneur. We want, you know, right. people to be entrepreneurs and to own their own businesses. And we, we cherish and we champion those people that can do that. But everyone is an entrepreneur. So um, you want to be able to take care of your employees and you want to highlight those companies that are doing right by them. And I think that it was great that um, we will be able to have a company like this, yeah. um, in, you know, in our city. That is phenomenal. I mean, $41,000 a year, yeah. go apply <laughs> now. Okay. So that's really good. And then also, I know you're doing so many things and with the small businesses in Rochester, you have a heart to help build those small businesses. Tell us more about that. Well, when I was president of city council and representing the Northeast area, I worked really, really closely with um, our business development person, Daisy Elgarin, who worked hard to get grants and to make sure that we are letting small businesses know what we have available at the city. Because our small businesses, you know, we may not have a, a Kodak that will employ 50,000 employees, but if you can get, you know, 10 companies to hire 100 people or one company to hire 10, you're starting to put the dent in. It. And small businesses will be what leads this, you know, this community yes. into the future. Um, when we look at our machining organizations, they may have the ability to hire two to three hundred people ultimately. But um, so we need to build more of those companies and working with like Dr. D.T. Ogelvy from um, RIT um, and their sustainable, um, their Institute of um, Entrepreneurship is going to help our city um, be able to um, to get those businesses that want to start in the city yes. and um, really focus on urban entrepreneurship, that that's going to be able to help us. And what other benefits will there be for those, those small businesses that want to get started? Well, it's really helping you with your business plan, helping you market yourself, so that you can um, build relationships with those companies that can utilize your services. Yes. How do you understand what it means to actually run a business? You know, workers' comp insurance, if you have to do that. Yes. Um, also, your taxes. You know, a lot of times, if you know, you may have it may be a great craftsman at something, but you may not have the skills, yes. you know, in the beginning to run your own company, having someone be able to guide you through that process is um, what the Center for Urban Entrepreneurship will do. And um, at times you may need capital. You may need some help to get started. You have that great idea and you need somebody to be an investor to say, okay, we can make this work. Then you wanna make sure that you give them the support that they need to do that. Yes, and I think that's so important. Mm -hmm. My family has always been in business. Yeah 
from my grandparents mm -hmm. who've always owned our own businesses. Mm -hmm. And so it's really important for small business to, is to have that where somebody is actually showing them what they need to do step mm -hmm. by step. Mm -hmm. So they're not feeling their way through right. and making mistakes along the way. Right. They have that support. So that is really, really good. And I also, I was thinking, um, as, you, as we were talking a little earlier and you talked about you being the first woman, of course, mayor, and you are African-American mayor that has stepped into this position in Rochester, New York. That is for women, that's a big thing for women. It's an empowering tool for women to see that not only have you paved the way, but you have opened doors for other women to say, I can do this. My dreams can come true. I don't have to stop here. I can step out on faith. I can believe because it is faith. It is a foundation of faith that pushes you forward, that you believe in who has actually mentored you to kind of push you and help you to you know, build you up to say, I can do this. Well, I've had a lot of great mentors along the way. I can say that in every stage of my life, there has been, you know, people there, rather it's my family, um, my aunts, my uncles, my, my parents, my grandparents. Um, but politically, the person that mentored me was Assemblyman David Gant. And um, his whole message always was to me that you can accomplish and be anything that you want to be. And, you know, sometimes, you know, he's like, I can't believe that you want to do this, but, you know, go ahead. You know, if, if this is what you want to do, I'm, I'm going to go with you. And um, just, you know, giving me the ability to think for myself and, and teaching me that it's OK to to think for yourself. But it's OK to fall and get back up. You know, the first time I ran for city council, I, I lost by seven votes. And it was, you know, a serious loss to me. But um, my grandmother was alive at the time. She said, it's, it's not your time. And, you know, the second time. So how'd you feel when, when you lost? You, you were, I know you were down, your grandma pushed you. So what, what was the ultimate goal after that? Well, it was to, I think I needed to be humbled. <laughs> because you know, I, you know, looking back, you yeah. know, at the time, I didn't think that. But looking back, I think that um, I had just graduated from law school a few years earlier. I passed the bar, and I'm like, oh well, you know, I'm from this community. You know, they need me, right. and they're like, no, I don't. <laughs> you know, not right now. <laughs> and so um, it was challenging at first, but I was young, and I had to learn what true community service was yeah. about. You know, this seat. You know, this mayor seat, my city council seat, you know, whatever political seat, it doesn't belong to you. Yes. It belongs to the community. The community puts you there to fill a role and to be of service for them and understanding what that really means. You know, I'm not going to be able to make everyone happy. I'm not going to be able to solve every po problem. Yes. But you know what? We're going to work at making this city better for all of its people and, and making sure that we uplift the entire community. Yes. So you pick yourself up and you decided that I can still do this and that's all a part of your faith your tenacity those that are around you that pushed you and I, I know that your grandfather was such an inspiration mm -hmm. to your life mm -hmm. and so he pushed you forward and so how did it feel just for him to find out that you will be the next mayor <laughs> I was excited. You know, granddad was with me, you know, every step of the way. And then all the pictures from the day I announced to the day that I won the primary. And I think it was sort of unbelievable for him. Um, you know, his life story, you know, where he came from, you know, yeah. the fields of, of King Street, South Carolina, losing his mom when he was three. His father never uh, really claimed him. He always looked for, you know, validation and, and, and support. And um, he became his own businessman and, you know, had a very, very strong um, sense of faith. And so when I told him that, you know, I was running and I was going to run and he said, OK, you know, well, I'll be there. I'll support you. And, you know, from city council all the way up to, you know, the day I actually won, um, he just said, you know, you can do this. You can do this. And um, he would always tell me, you know, when I would come to him um, and be down or like, I don't know. And he just says, trust in God. Yes. yes. Trust in God. Yes. And that's so important. And it's such a blessing for him to have seen that to see you cross over into that position. Mm -hmm. That is such a blessing. And one thing that I like that you said is you talked about just those that pushed you, 
but having that connection with the people, having someone to actually push you forward to say, you can do this. Mm -hmm. Mayor Lovely Warren, you can do this. Right. And you know, I love your name, Lovely. <laughs> it's just so lovely, girl. It's <laughs> beautiful. You. Now, how'd you get that name? I'm named after my aunt. Okay. She, um, she walked into the hospital room and my parents were going to name me something else. I don't even know. And she said, well, name her after me. You know, name her Lovely Ann Warren. Um, and my aunt Lovely, um, she was the first one to go to college in our family, first one to receive her PhD. And um, so she set the stage for, for all of us. And so we stand on, you know, her shoulders and, and her legacy. So you follow those footsteps, huh? You got that name, lovely. That's beautiful. <laughs> so I, I want one more question. I like to ask you just one more question. Mm -hmm. I'd like to ask you about the interlude, that project, the seventeen point seven million that uh, the city has received for the interlude project. What did, what are the plans for that area? Well, one of the things that we have, um, you know, that you know, something that we don't really have is. Um, buildable lots in the city, meaning shovel-ready land. And so what the interloop will give us the ability to have is eight acres of developable sho shovel-ready land in the heart of our city. And um, this is a project that has been talked about and um, talked about for, you know, I believe over 20 years. Finally, we received some federal funding to fill in um, the eastern portion of that, on uh, the southeastern portion of that. And, you you know, maybe eventually we'll fill in the other part, but um, it really is giving us the opportunity to really see and to really shape that area into something that can be a, a positive um, business development site for um, for that community. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much. It's good to have you here and hopefully we can get back together in the near future. Absolutely. And I'm excited about what you're doing for the city. Thank so you. continue the great work that you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to What's Cooking. I am excited that you are tuned in to our What's Cooking segment. We have a great salad in store for you today. It is our Cobb salad. The Cobb salad has a lot of ingredients in it. It has your eggs, your bacon bits, also, it has chicken in it. It is absolutely great. It's wonderful. It's fulfilling. It is a salad that has all the things that you need. It has your protein. It has your vegetable. Of course, your salad and your tomatoes. Then we also have the wedge salad. The wedge salad, I just, I love how the wedge salad looks. You know, I like how things, when they look pretty. Um, so the wedge salad is wonderful as well. It is cut into wedges and it also has your bacon bits. It has your your, uh, your tomatoes on there and it's a wonderful salad as well and so I want to encourage you to eat healthy we just started today we started our shred the weight challenge you can go to my website drperditameeks.com and check out shred the weight well listen shred the weight we are to lose 20 pounds in four weeks so I'm telling you the next time you see me I should be about at least 15 to 20 pounds lighter I'm gonna do my best to do this challenge. I want you to also know that we would love to come into your restaurant. If you are a restaurant owner, we would love to see what's cooking in your place, what your favorite dish is, what are your customers like. We would like to get in there and interview you and show everybody in this city what you have to offer. Please go to my website, drperditameeks.com. We are looking for you.